Hi, this is my tiny house right behind me. And this video is a video about the process of building this tiny house from scratch. Uh, everything from the trailer all the way up to the solar panels on the roof. Uh, it's gonna be a pretty long one. So if you're interested, stick around. If you're not, see ya. With all that out of the way, roll the tape. In early 2021, I became very interested in renewable energy and sustainable off-grid living and uh, as a result the tiny house movement and it wasn't long before I decided that building a tiny house for myself was something I was simply going to have to do. I started scouring the internet for any kind of information I could find, watching tour after tour of tiny houses from all over the world for every different climate with every different kind of layout and furniture and cabinetry you could ever imagine while simultaneously trying to learn as much as possible about construction, insulation, wood framing, and all the different materials that go into making a house. And by midway through the summer of 2021, I finalized the design for the tiny house I wanted to build. But before I could start building the tiny house, I needed something to build the tiny house on. We started with a set of rear axles from a heavy goods vehicle. We cut them in half and then spliced them to widen them to 8 feet or 2.4 meters. Once the axles were modified, we cleared and leveled an outdoor workspace to assemble the ladder frame of the trailer. Lucky for me, one of my friends is a professional welder, so he took care of all the important structural welding. In his absence, I cut and prepped all of the rungs of the ladder frame and tacked them in place temporarily so that he could come back and weld them properly later on. Theoretically, this should work. Okay, progress. We have the um, hitch cut. Um, it's not welded in place, but it's there. Um, and then we have our suspension units sort of in the process of being fitted. Um, it is now at the stage where we certainly definitely cannot flip it over on our own. So definitely gonna need some mechanical assistance for that bit, but. So, the hitch is now attached. The wheels are on, and over here, we have a one and a half ton chain block up there. Um, and the plan is to attach it to one side of the trailer, once it's wheeled in here, and turn it up on its side and flip it that way. was right side up, we got to work welding any seams or joints that had been hard to reach up until now. And I started buffing and cleaning all of the exposed metal surfaces in preparation for paint. You can also see us welding on the mounts for the support jacks 
that will stabilize the trailer once it's fully built. I clad the entire underside of the trailer with lightweight galvanized steel to act as a barrier for moisture and potentially even animals trying to find a home for winter. We framed the wheel arches in steel box sections to add rigidity to the trailer, but also to, to allow us to frame the timber walls directly on top without additional bracing or support. Okay, that's us done for the day. Um, we got both of these uh, wheel arches uh, welded up, uh, triangulated uh, and painted. Um, I've got most of the galvanized um, flashing cups, but um, I think I'll wait for another day to install that. But um, good progress, I think. With the trailer chassis completed, it was time to move on to framing the tiny house. The whole building is framed with 4 inch by 8 inch and a half or 100 mil by 35 mil lumber. This offers significant weight savings over a traditional 2x4 while still allowing a 4 inch cavity for insulation and minimal losses in strength. Because of the sheer size of the long walls of the building, I decided to frame the building in sections and assemble it piece by piece. So uh, this is day three of uh, framing. Uh, that's the door frame. Um, we're still we're gonna put in a full size header over the door, but right now there's just a single. End of day three and we have three walls up. Kinda slow, but at the same time, um, they're kind of large and tricky to work with. This is uh, my door, and I have to squared up with some uh, last book. Uh, okay, update day four, or whatever it is, I don't know. This is the back wall, so that's going to be the window for the bathroom. We fastened the timber frame to the trailer using M10 bolts that were drilled through the trailer frame, through the floor, the base plate, and then screwed to an upright. Today the goal is get the rest of the rafters in and also cut up this uh, closed cell insulation we got yesterday and uh, fit it into the roof and if we're lucky we might even get the, uh, the membrane on the walls on. Um, Okay, update. I've opened the insulation and I'm getting the panels up. So this is 100 mil of polyurethane. The walls and ceiling of the tiny house were insulated with 100 mil foil-faced polyurethane insulation. This was cut to fit in between all of the studs and then any additional air gaps were filled with expanding foam. To reduce the height of the tiny house, we opted to build the floor by sandwiching two inches of polystyrene together with a half inch of plywood, laminated directly onto the floor of the trailer and fastened down with screws directly into the steel undercarriage. This effectively halves the thickness of the floor while still offering decent insulation.
The entire interior of the tiny house is clad with 6 mil birch plywood. This offers significant weight savings over traditional half-inch sheathing, while also doubling as the interior finish of the tiny house, hence saving weight. Okay, I'm starting on the cladding uh, on the exterior of the building. Uh, i got the cladding over there. What I've built, I've made this jig, um, which follows the perfect the slope of the roof. And hopefully this jig will help me uh, get a consistent slope on the, all the cladding um, and help make it easier to mark as well. Tiny House's maiden voyage was accomplished using a neighbor's tractor and a steel chain. This was the first time I'd seen the fully built house move, and it was a little bit nerve-wracking to be completely honest. Once the tiny house was towed out into the yard, the race was on to finish the roof and make the whole building watertight. Unfortunately, I don't have a lot of footage of the process of framing the internal walls. But what I will say is, trying to install a pocket door inside of a 4-inch wall is a little bit more complicated than I first thought. There's a storm outside, and I've got the pocket door kind of done. So this is the bathroom, this is where the door goes. Um, and obviously I've got to put edge, uh, edge banding around all this door frame and hide everything. But... So I'm in the tiny house, the heater's on, it's 25 degrees in here, lovely and warm. These, pe these panels here and here are not insulated, these are literally directly attached to the outside of the building. And if you ever wanted an example of a cold condensating surface, that is one of those. The initial plan was to use generic IKEA furniture for all the interior kitchen fit out. I soon realised that the fender boxes would make this impossible. In a moment of total overconfidence, I decided I would build all of the interior kitchen cabinets myself. I thought this would be a quick job. It wasn't. I'm back and I've got my dad. He's going to help me put it up. To save space in the tiny house, I designed a pull-out workstation for working on the computer. I also designed and built my own pull-out pantry to store food and condiments. Okay, it's solar panel mounting day. We have two of these brackets already mounted. We've got to fit two more up there. And ultimately, these four panels are going to end up on this roof. To allow us to secure the rails that the solar panels were attached to, I designed and 3D printed custom spacers 
that matched the profile of the corrugated roof. In total, the rooftop solar array consists of four 310 watt panels in a series parallel configuration, outputting 1200 watts at 80 volts. The off-grid system consists of a 2.8 kilowatt 24 volt lithium iron phosphate battery bank, a 1500 watt pure sine wave inverter, and a 40 amp solar charge controller. Every connection is made. I guess there's nothing left to do now, but uh, press that button there. Nothing exploded. Top notch. Gorgeous day. Apparently today they announced that uh, fuel and electrical bills are going up by like 30% or 40%. So, good day to be entirely solar powered. With the electrical system installed, it was time to build my custom heat recovery ventilation system. This consisted of a copper heat sink. The stale warm air at the top of the house was exhausted and drawn across this heat sink while the fresh cold air from the outside was drawn in on the other side of the heatsink, exchanging thermal energy. Yeah, working well. I was lucky enough to find a flat piece of land only a few hundred meters away from where I built the tiny house. We set to work clearing and leveling the area and putting down gravel for the tiny house. Oh. <laughs> Okay, you're all you're on the gravel. Everything's on the gravel. After seven and a half months of working on the tiny house and then living in the tiny house for almost eight months, I quite honestly say that it's been one of the most challenging and fulfilling projects I've ever undertaken and I'm immensely proud of how it turned out. <laughs>